Hey guys, it's April here, and welcome to my February wrap-up. It's very late, I know, but I was taking a break from YouTube, and now I'm back, so... <laughs> yeah. So, three things happened in February, and that resulted in me only reading ten books, when I could have read more, because in January I read twenty. <laughs> I know ten is still a bunch, but... Anyway, here are the things that happened. Number one, I, I re-watched all three seasons of Avatar The Last Airbender. Number two, then I watched all four seasons of Avatar The Legend of Korra. Number three, I became obsessed with One Direction and spent my time watching their movies over and over again and watching YouTube videos of them just being adorable. <sighs> the first book I completed in February was The Boy Book by E. Lockhart. It's the second book in the Ruby Oliver series and I loved it. I gave it four stars because it wasn't like it. If I compare this to young adult contemporary books like Anna and the French Kiss and Falling Into Place and and Before I Die, it just doesn't, it, I couldn't give it a full five stars but I love this series so much. It is adorable, it is funny, it is relatable to me. Anyway, I'm sure it's relatable to a lot of people. Then I read the third book, which is The Treasure Map of Boys, and I actually did give this one a 5 out of 5 stars because it was a, on a whole nother level, in my opinion, especially the last chapter of this book. I was like, oh my god, that is my life. That is my life right now. So kudos to you, Ilokart girlfriend. Next, I read one of the most influential and important books to me in my life ever, ever. And that's Prozac Nation by Elizabeth Wurzel. And this is a memoir and you can see how many things I've tabbed. It's a memoir about the author um, going through severe depression. I think it was in the 70s. It was either the 60s or the 70s or both. Not sure. But um, yeah, it's about her dealing with that major trigger warning because this book does not hide anything it it expresses exactly what it's like to have mental illness um, especially depression and like thoughts of self-harm and suicide and it's very very real and there is no like going around the topic she just gets in there she says it how it is how it was for her and exactly what happened it's very explicit in that way so yeah huge warning if that's an issue for you um, it could have been an issue for me it could have gone either one of two ways yeah at the time I was reading this I was going through very similar thing as the author with severe depression and thoughts of self-harm and crazy stuff like that um, and I just was in shock because back then there was nothing that could be done for her there were no medications that could have helped her or anything and if I didn't have medication to deal with these things I would probably be dead I'm sorry if that just got way too real, but it's true and I admire her so much because she went through so much without the help of medication and being labelled as a crazy person and it just, oh my gosh, it just hit me like right in the feels. I was like, how did she do that? I had, oh. And you follow her journey and... Oh. I just don't even have words. Um, as you can see, I tabbed a lot of things. The red things um, are things that I found really relatable. I was like, oh my god, that's exactly how I feel. But they're really depressing things. And the blue things were, um, there's not very many of them, but the blue things were sort of inspiring quotes that I just found really hit home for me. Um, yeah, I, I can't even talk about this book coherently that's how much it affected me um, I definitely recommend it if you want a look into mental illness and how it really is for people um, especially people back then in America when they didn't really have help 
um, it was definitely, definitely a whirlwind. Oh my gosh. So obviously I gave this 5 out of 5 stars, I gave it 10,000 stars if I could. The next book I read was How I Live Now by Meg Rosoff. This follows a girl um, while they're going through World War III and she falls in love with her cousin when she moves to England. Um, it's very weird, um, it's a short book, but it has no quotation marks and it's very odd. I found it really hard to get into, it has a lot of mixed reviews so I didn't know which way I was going to go. but. Um, yeah, for me, I'm, I kind of sat right in the middle. I gave it three stars. It was really hard to get into. I felt the ending was a bit unresolved and abrupt. It just wasn't my favorite. The next book though is my favorite. Um, it is This Is Not A Test by Courtney Summers. Um, this is a zombie apocalypse novel, but it also centers around mental illness and abuse and stuff like that as well. It was just amazing and I saw Jude talk about this. I'll leave her channel down below. I love her. She's beautiful. Um, I saw her talk about this and how it really helped her with her mental illness and I can see why it did. Um, it follows this girl who she had an older sister and they lived with their father who was very abusive. Um, and her, her older sister would always say, don't worry, we'll get out of it together. We'll get, we'll get out together. But then one day her sister just up and leaves. Like she leaves her little sister behind and her, she just never forgives her for that, even though she doesn't know where she is. And then this zombie apocalypse breaks out and she's like, what the hell is going on? She finds herself um, trapped in her school with like, I think it's like eight other, classmates of hers and they just have to learn how to survive and crazy stuff happens and she the main character was just planning on going out and letting the zombies have her because you know she was just so fed up with life and she saw nothing positive in her future so she was she was going to do that but then you know things change people come into your life who help you and it was just really inspiring and a crazy, crazy ride. Oh, I can't recommend this book enough. Oh my god. Then I read the sequel, Please Remain Calm, on my Kindle. It's only available as an ebook as it's only 97 pages long. And if there's not a third book, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Because that cliffhanger, I'm so done. Like, Oh my god, I can't deal if there's not going to be a third book. I can't. There has to be. There has to be. So I gave both of those five stars. They were phenomenal, phenomenal. I definitely recommend them 100%. Next I read <laughs> Who We Are, an autobiography by the lovely boys from One Direction. We'll just cover his face, shall we? Huh. Um, yeah, as I said at the beginning of the video, I used to hate One Direction, was never a fan, and then my friend Chelsea, who I mentioned in my January wrap-up, who you should all go follow right now, um, she mentioned that she liked them, and I was like, mm, maybe I'll watch the movie. And I did, and I fell in love. I just don't see how you can't like them once you see them be them. Like, as people, they're hilarious, they're real, and they're talented and beautiful people. It's such a good book and the actual book is beautiful. It has all their signatures on the front and it's a bright orange and it's just, ooh, I just wanna rub my face on it. That was weird, okay. <laughs> I loved it, I especially loved Harry's section. Not because Harry is my favorite, which he is my favorite, um, but because he talked a lot about um, his anxiety and his nerves and how he got over that. And he's just a really wise, young man and you wouldn't think that unless you like saw some of the things that he wrote slash spoke about like in interviews and stuff not that I've watched 10,000 interviews or anything uh, but you can just tell he's so wise for his age and oh I just love them I just love them and their music really really helped me throughout the last few months which have been so hard for me. So, thanks Wendy and Chelsea. 
The next book I read also because of Chelsea, and then Sloppy Firsts by Megan McCafferty. This was published in like the early 2000s or something, like it's pretty old. I had to get it off eBay. Um, yeah, and it basically follows this girl's journey through high school. And it was so, so, so good. Oh, I could just relate to her so much. Um, her best friend moves away and she has to sort of deal with, you know, just hanging out with people that she doesn't really like. They're really mean and she just feels lonely. She feels this just endless amount of loneliness, which I could really rel relate to. And I just, uh, this book was just amazing. It was so well written and just glorious. And I loved it. And I gave it five stars and you should go read it. The second last book I read was Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This is another memoir um, sort of said to be similar to um, Prozac Nation, but I gave this two stars. Honestly, I, I just couldn't even, it didn't even come close to Prozac Nation and the effect it had on me. This, it's really short and I found that the even though it's a memoir, like, the events of her life, it just jumped all over the place and it was really confusing and just, I just, it was bland. I didn't feel anything and books like this should make you feel something and I didn't, I just didn't feel anything. I felt it was just really odd and, eh, I gave it two stars. Disappointment. And the last book I read was After We Collided by Anna Todd, which is the second book in the After series, and it's a hunker of a book, but I read it in like a few days because these books are amazing. I gave this five stars, and yeah, I plan to do a series review because there's a lot of controversy surrounding this series, um, but I encourage you to forget about the hate and pick it up and form your own opinion because it is very different to what you may think. Um, there are so many twists and turns in this series that I just didn't see coming. I honestly, I was like, oh, I know what's going to happen at the end. Like, it's just so obvious where this is leading. And I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. Um, yeah, and I just love how this series focuses on such important aspects of a young woman's life. Not just the relationships, but also um, uni, um, relationships with friends and other people, and family. Family is huge in these books. Um, and work life, and, oh, becoming independent. It's all just so well done, and so shocked. I'm so shocked that I loved this series. Just putting it out there. I expected to hate it, but I didn't. <laughs> um, I have a written review for After, so I'll link it down below. I might have written reviews for some of the other books. If I do, I will leave them in the description. Wow, what are words? I will leave them in the description box if you're interested in checking them out on my book blog or on my Goodreads, whatever you prefer. Anyway, so that was my February wrap up, and I will see you very soon for my March wrap up. Yes. Okay. Oh, bye-bye.